right? And then the last disease that we're going to talk about that's common in rabbits is heart disease. And so this, when I put up the definition of heart disease, heart disease is really something that's a broad topic. There are many, many different problems you can have with the heart. So it's really a wide variety of ailments um, that can affect the heart. It can include problems with the valves, with the muscles, uh, with the vessels. It can have problems with the electrical conduction of the heart. So numerous problems with the heart can fall into this category. So this is a very brief overview of heart disease. So how can a rabbit present when it actually has problems with heart disease? What might you identify at home as a problem? Well, they might be lethargic. They may not be exercising as much as they once were. You know, they're just not really hopping around as much. They want to sit around more. What a lot of people recognize is really more an increased respiratory effort. So they may be breathing a lot more heavy where you can actually see the nostrils kind of flaring or their abdomen moving quite a bit more than you would. And they may even be pale or have blue mucous membranes. So if you look at the little pink portion of their no nostrils or their ears where they're normally nice and pink, um, if those areas look really pale or if they almost look blue, then that, that particular rabbit um, may have a heart problem. The problem is, is that those signs can fit with respiratory issues as well. So it's, it's just seeing those signs isn't 100% diagnostic. It's something that okay, this is what we can key in on, recognize that we may potentially have a heart problem with us. We need to get them to the vet. When they come to the vet, well, of course, some things that we may identify based on our physical exam, we may hear a murmur. And so what a heart murmur is, is it's just turbulent blood flow. So blood normally is flowing through your heart in a very one-directional way. When you have a heart murmur, it means that that blood isn't flowing in a nice unidirectional fashion. It's kind of regurgitating and moving back and forth a little bit. We may hear an arrhythmia, so the heart really should have this nice constant beat, and an arrhythmia is just where the heartbeat is really kind of off. It's not this nice constant um, beat that you're occurring or hearing occur. Bounding hearts is one thing we may hear. They may have bad pulses. Again, they may be pale or have those blue mucous membranes. Something that's really helpful and what we will often do is our first thing when we are suspicious of heart disease, or first diagnostic when we're suspicious of heart disease, is taking x-rays. X-rays to really look at the size of the heart, the shape of the heart, what do the lungs look like? Because when you have heart disease, if you have a heart disease um, where they are having an increased respiratory effort, acting like they can't breathe easily, they're pale, when that heart is not pumping as adequately as it should, it can cause essentially a black backflow um, of that blood and you can have vessels kind of be leaking, you can have fluid that accumulates in the chest. And as that fluid accumulates in the chest, that's why you see the signs that you do. So we need to take x-rays to identify if there is anything like fluid in the chest. We do an echocardiogram. So an echocardiogram is actually just an ultrasound of the heart. It actually allows you to see the valves and the muscles and how that heart's actually functioning. And then an EKG is another thing. The EKG, or ECG, you can say it either way, um, the electrocardiogram is really done to identify the electrical activity that's occurring with that heart. So, um, hopefully you guys can see this a little better than it shows up on the screen here. But So this, again, is an x-ray of a rabbit. We have our normal rabbit over here to the side. So the head is over this way, the tail is over at the end there. Again, everything that's black is gas. What we should see in the chest is a lot of black. And it's going to essentially look like nice big black triangles. And you can see in the chest of this rabbit, we have this nice big black triangle there. That's the lung. And then we have this little white circular object. That's going to be the heart. This is a normal rabbit. In this x-ray over here, it is a lot more um, zoomed in on the rabbit, of course, than what we have in this image. But you can see the degree of black in this x-ray versus the degree of black in this x-ray is quite different. We have a whole lot less black here in that x-ray. And the heart is actually this whole big giant thing that's kind of pushing um, up on the little trachea. That's that little black tube that's coming in there, or the windpipe consuming a little bit more space, and then it's actually causing a bit of fluid to accumulate in the lungs as well. A couple more pictures of heart disease. These are a little bit more dramatic. This is a rabbit that's lying on its back. So its legs are up, and we have our chest up here, 
Here's our heart, and here's our lungs lying on either side of that heart. In this x-ray here, our heart is up here. It's really hard to see the margins of the heart um, because that heart probably is a little bit larger. We have fluid accumulating around it, and you really cannot see much black in those lungs at all. So that's a much more uh, serious case there. Just a picture of a rabbit getting an echocardiogram done. Um, it's usually something that luckily isn't too stressful for the rabbit. We just have a little probe that's put against the side of the heart. This is something that is best to be done with a veterinary cardiologist. Veterinary cardiologists um, were trained specifically to be looking at hearts. And so they will be doing different measurements and watching blood flow and really be doing a lot of very high-skilled imaging of that heart to identify what we have going on as our problem. And those are just some pictures of the images and a little EKG tracing at the bottom there. Okay, so again, when we're talking about heart disease, I'm being very vague because there's many different kinds of heart disease that can be going on. So I just put up a few of the common treatments and then some of the less common treatments. But again, it depends upon the individual heart problem that is present. The most common treatments for treating heart disease is going to be Lasix. Lasix is something that helps to pull fluid off of the chest, help to relieve um, the signs that you're seeing from heart disease. Another thing is called enalapril or benazapril. That helps the heart essentially to not have to work as hard. Pimobendin is another drug that we see that can help the heart not have to work as hard, help it with its contractility. Less common things. Pacemaker is certainly one of them, and as I'm sure some of you guys know, um, Dr. Canfer here a couple years ago had a patient, a rabbit patient, who actually had to have a pacemaker placed, and that was the first rabbit that ever had a pacemaker placed. So it's definitely something that, uh, you know, is available for rabbits. Luckily, we don't have to do it often, but something that is available. And there's a whole slew of other drugs, many, many different things that are available. Again, depends upon the individual heart problem that's present. Sometimes we do have to do additional supportive therapies for rabbits. So one thing is called thoracocentesis. Sometimes when you have heart disease, you get a lot of fluid that accumulates between the chest and the lungs itself. Thoracocentesis is where we actually withdraw that fluid from that lung space or between the lungs and the chest to allow those lungs to actually open up more so they can breathe better um, by sticking a little needle into the chest and drawing that fluid out. Oxygen therapy a lot of times is needed because, again, they're not breathing as easily as they should be, so putting them in a more concentrated oxygen environment is a little bit more helpful with their ability to breathe. A lot of these rabbits, unfortunately, have stasis as well as a secondary complicating factor because sometimes it becomes a matter of do I feel like breathing or do I feel like eating? And most animals are going to choose to breathe over eating. So they may be presenting as signs of stasis, um, as a thing that the owners recognize, but then when they get in the hospital and we actually examine them, look at them, and we say, oh, geez, your rabbit, yes, it's in stasis. It's not eating like it should, but it's in stasis because it has a really serious problem with heart disease going on. Okay. Follow-up for heart disease. Once a rabbit has a heart disease, it's typically going to need some form of lifelong therapy. Heart disease, unfortunately, is something that we can't cure yet. Maybe one day we can cure it. Um, again, there's lots of different types of heart disease out there. So, you know, follow-up therapy is going to be dependent upon what kind of heart disease we have present. But I will tell you that frequent rechecks with the vet, with the cardiologist, echocardiograms are often necessary. Um, if we have a cardiologist helping us out with these cases, then cardiologists usually like to see animals every six months to a year, depending upon that individual animal's problem and how serious the issue is. So definitely, if you have heart disease, be prepared that follow-up is going to be necessary. <laughs>